I'm demonstrating a DDMS W export tool I wrote that I found here using a Google search. I'll follow the link here to this wiki page where I can either download the source code or a little bit more easily follow this link to a download file, which is what I'll do by right clicking and saving to my desktop. Then I just drag the Lisp file into an open drawing and give a moment of attention to this note that says I may want to understand DDMSW before using this tool and referring me to my blog post. I have a drawing here that's properly geo-referenced to an area in Phoenix although all the lines here are fake. I have some green lines representing land use map two little land use areas I have some red lines representing a soil map, three areas. I have a cyan line representing my major basin, which will be used for rainfall in DDMSW. I have some white lines that represent my three sub-basins. And I have yellow lines that represent my paths for the time of concentration. What I'd like to do is add some data to these polylines so that all the information for the DDMSW calculation resides in this drawing. The export helper Lisp routine has two commands. I'll run the DDMSW copy command to define data tables and attach them to these polylines so that I can enter my hydrologic data. Then I'll enter the data. Then I'll run the DDMSW export command to create the maps that DDMSW needs. We say maps when we mean the groups of shape files, GIS files. I'll go a little bit slower in this tutorial so that we can see the full range of data that we can work with. DDMSW copy should work since I dragged in the routine. It wants to know which map I want to work with. I None of my maps, none of my polylines work for two maps, so I only need to work with one map at a time. Rainfall, no. Subbasin, no. Land use, yes. So I know TC, no. Okay, I'll do s land use since that's what it tells me it's doing now. I'll hit enter. Select my area map polylines. I'll pick the land use polyline. It copied the polylines to the requested layers and it's going to attach the data. All right, now I run it again. Let's turn off land use. Let's turn on subbasin and let's hit return. Select the area map polylines. I may have a little trouble here. Let's see if I can pick one, two, and I can't get my third polyline, so I may, I wonder if I can on the fly turn off some layers. I can't, so I'm going to have to hit escape and turn off a few of these layers. That should be enough. All right, now let's do the DDMSW copy again. It's ready to copy subbasin. So I'll hit space bar. It tells me to pick the polylines, and I get these three. All right, now it attaches the data to those. <coughs> I run. Oh, I need to set. Turn off my sub-basin, turn on my rain. Then we run DDMSW again. And I turn off my sub-basin copying and on my rain copying. Hit return. And pick. Hmm, rain did not go off. 
I'll cheat. Pick those and then remove that. That leaves my rain. One found. Okay. Now, I've forgotten what we've done, but there's some DDMSW. I guess we haven't done soil yet. Let's do soil. I wasn't very organized. So let's turn off the rainfall. Turn on the soil. Hit return. And I've got to turn a few things off. Rain. Turn soil on. And land off. Okay. Let's copy that. DDMSW copy. It's ready for soil. So I hit return. It wants me to pick the map polylines. One, two, three. And it's defined and attached the data to those, we suppose. Now, my last one is TC. Uh, let's turn off the soil. Let's turn on the path. Sea storm watershed path. Okay. And let's turn off these DDMSW layers that it's been copying. All that's left is my paths. So I'm ready to type DDMSW copy again. And it says... TC, no, I want TC, yes, and I don't need the soil anymore. Hit return, select the TC map polylines, and there it's done. And we've copied everything we need. So I'm going to turn off the watershed path, and all I need now, all I need to work with now is my DDMS layers. Now that everything's copied, let's see what happens when we click on a time of concentration and go to properties. There's an upstream and downstream elevation that are the only things we need to type in for this. DDMSW will do the length and the basin based on what it can determine. Fill those in for each one of these. Twelve forty six, twelve fifty eight, and the last one, twelve forty six, and twelve. 51. Just making those up. Okay, now we turn off the time of concentration and we do the same thing for the soil. We need to pick one of them and we'll need to pick in a soil um, lid, which we can find by going into DDMSW. I'll turn on DDMSW, start it, and we can find the soil um, codes in um, the soil defaults area. Hydrology, I, I believe I might have HEC1 turned on. I mean turned off. I'll need to add a project for hydrology and hydraulics that is a HEC1 file here. And it'll be YouTube 2. I'll save it. And now we've got a HEC1 
project with some soil defaults. The rational method only uses land use. Here I've got my soil codes and we'll just pretend that these first couple are what I need. Let's say that we've got a 64, 50, 3, 64, 58, and a 65, 32. 53, 58, and 65, 32. Sixty four fifty three, sixty four fifty eight, and sixty five thirty two. All right, so now I, my soil information is in my drawing. Let's turn off soil and turn on land use. We can go to DDMSW. Similarly, go into land use defaults. And let's say that one of these is uh, high density residential and the other is medium. So we'll do 180 and 170. All I have to do is go to properties. This is a 180 high density and this is 170 medium density. Alright, now what do we do next? Let's go to the rainfall. This one we don't have to change. It's already Major Basin 01 with Rainfall ID default. It's easy enough. Now we need to do our sub-basins, and that's probably the very last. And these can only be six characters because they are HEC-1 operations. And we'll call this one W1. Watershed 1, or just 1. <laughs> um, I'll call this one W2. Watershed 2. And W3. The area is calculated by DDMSW. Once all the data has been added to all these DDMSW layer polylines after DDM, the DDMSW copy command added the tables for us, we are ready to just type DDMSW export. It needs us to find a place for it to export. I'm going to go to the de desktop where I've got a DDMSW folder and it says select directory and add an arbitrary file name. Okay, I've selected the directory and it says it's already given me an arbitrary file name so I just pick save. Now I think it is doing its thing. I see some things going by and it says exported in zero seconds. I have every reason to believe that if I go to the desktop I'll now see a bunch of maps. My land use, rainfall, soil, subbasin, and TC maps. If fate smiles kindly upon me all I need to do at this point is go to DDMSW, pick my maps, and DDMSW will use them to do all the calculations. The first map I have to pick by first going into my project and Oh, no, no, that's wrong. Going into Rainfall IDs and telling it I want to use GIS. 
Then I go into Rainfall and it lets me pick a map, which is in the desktop DDMSW folder. And I pick the Rainfall map. Save, update, and hopefully, oh, it's sad. It says default was not found, so I did something wrong. I'll go figure it out and let you know. I'm back in AutoCAD and I discovered that my rainfall polyline was not closed. So I have to go back to the folder with all my maps and I need to delete them all and try again. Let's delete all these profiles and all the maps. Then I'll also delete this attached data script and then I'll go back to my drawing and type DDMSW export from my desktop in the DDMSW folder and say save. It's done and we'll go back to DDMSW and try our luck one more time. This time it looks a little better and we see our map. That's good. However, it says it doesn't like where we are, as though I did not set my projection. Let's check that out. It occurred to me that possibly my rainfall area was simply so small that it missed the centroid of any of the rain cells that are in DDMSW, so I went into AutoCAD and arbitrarily stretched my rainfall area larger and that worked. So there you go. We now have rainfall data and we just need to go into our maps update hydrology, tell it we want to do, use all the maps and pick them one at a time. land use, soils, TC, and say save and update. And if we have any better luck, it'll work the first time. Well, it looks like fate has smiled upon us a little better for these maps, possibly Okay, it gives us a bunch of notes because our sub-basins are very tiny, but we do, we do have the ability now to go into our sub-basins and we have TC and R, which is what we need for our Clark and we have our green amped parameters. And this, amigos míos, is what we were after. Our sub-basin data based on parameters and an input data that exists solely in AutoCAD. Thank you for watching and leave any comments or questions in the comments section below.